Let's move on to the first business item, which is a presentation from the Chitton Solid Waste District uh, about the bond vote for the uh, materials recovery facility. Sarah, come on up, introduce yourself, and have your say. Great, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sarah Reeves. I'm the executive director for CSWD, and we. Uh, I believe Michelle sent over a PowerPoint, so if that could be brought up, that would be great. I appreciate that. So I am here today um, to talk with the select board, uh, as I promised that I would come back and talk to you specifically about um, the ballot initiative that Chin and Solid District has, um, is putting before the voters on November 8th. It, it is considered a special election. Um, we are seeking authorization from the voters of Chittenden County to borrow uh, up to $22 million. Recording stopped. Mm -hmm. Oops. I can hang on until it starts again. Please, yes, you should have it right back. <laughs> no worries. Oh, you disabled screen. You name it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, some. Do you want to make me those? Yeah. What? <laughs> so do we need to restart recording also? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Recording in progress. Okay, we're back. There we go. Good job. No, it's okay. Uh, so as I was saying, we're uh, requesting authorization from uh, Chittenden County voters to borrow uh, $22 million to construct a new materials re uh, recovery facility. And go to the next slide, please. And I don't know that anyone here needs to be, be reminded of who CSWD is, but um, just in case there is someone new uh, attending in, from the public, um, this is who we are. We are a municipality created in 1987 um, by our member towns, and we do encompass all of Chittenden County um, to uh, manage solid waste created in the district on their behalf. And our numbers keep going up. Um, the population is increasing in Chittenden County, uh, as are the businesses. So we serve not just residents, but also businesses, institutions, um, schools, et cetera. Next, please. And again, I think probably everyone here is familiar with the facilities and the services that um, we either own, operate, and the services that we, we uh, provide to the residents and businesses of uh, Chittenden County. Um, and one of the the key reasons I'm here today, again, is that last bullet on the bottom, their materials recovery facility. Um, we own the MRF in, and we call it MRF, my name's with Smurf. Uh, we own the MRF here in Chittenden County. It is, again, a municipally owned um, facility. The other facility in uh, Vermont is privately owned and operated by Casella. Next slide, please. And what it does is it uh, basically is a big plant, a manufacturing plant that sorts the blue bin recyclables. So anything that you put in your blue bin or your, your blue cart or that you drop off to one of our drop-off centers and put in the recycling container gets brought to this building and then is sorted into different commodities. So we sort them into bottles, cans, jugs, cardboard, paper, tin. We own the building. We own the property. We own the equipment. Uh, we do contract with Casella for the daily operation. And as I mentioned, it is, the, it is the publicly owned facility in the state. So why do we need a new one? 
Uh, the last uh, the one that we have now is built uh, 1993. It was built to manage 25,000 tons of recycling. We are currently processing about 47,000 tons. Um, it has it is at over maximum capacity. We are still operating at one shift, but it is very very inefficient. Um, we cannot expand uh, the location where we're at in Williston. We can't go up. Um, we can't go out. We can't go back. We are at the end of the road, so we literally cannot move anywhere and do any an expansion, uh, which we would need to do in order to accommodate better what we're doing now and to be able to expand and have flexibility for the future. There is no way that in this particular facility we could ever hope to take any more material or any different types of material, and that is critical for the future. Next, please. So, and again, I just kind of jumped ahead on the slide. Um, but what we're doing is, um, I'll, I'll skip to the inefficient hand sorting, and that is is a photo of some of the Casella employees who are um, doing the best job that they can given the circumstances of sorting bottles and cans. They are sorting each bottle, each jug, each can by hand. And the material is, there's so much of it that it goes by so quickly, they literally cannot get everything that's going by them at one pass, so it has to be scooped up and brought back in for a second pass. Every container is sorted twice. It's incredibly ineffective and inefficient. Next. Also, we have very limited storage. This is a photo of on the left side, um, milk jugs, and on the middle and the right are um, laundry detergent jugs that are being stored outside because we don't have room inside to store them. Uh, this is not at all ideal. It is not industry best practice. You always want to keep all your materials indoors whenever you can, um, really at all times. And particularly in Vermont with our, our variations in weather, this is not ideal. And the new facility, everything will be kept inside. Next, please. So this is, it might be a little bit difficult to to see, but this is the conceptual design. Again, this is being intended to be built on property that CSWD owns in Williston on Redmond Road, um, just down the, the road from our admin building and our um, drop-off center. And the blue square is the a representation of the current MRF's size. So you can see that um, we're looking to add on either side. On either end, one is the receiving area or the tip floor, which will triple in size. And on the other side is the storage area for the bales, which will also triple in size. So the entire MRF currently would fit in just the processing area of the new MRF. So we're looking to go from about 32,000 square feet to about 60,000 square feet. And it's desperately needed. Next, please. So we're looking at adding technology. Uh, the only technology we have in the current MRF is a, an old magnet um, that does wear out over time. We do have some glass cleanup system that we will be actually bringing to the new facility, so we will be reusing some of the equipment that we have. Um, so that system and the baler, the machine that, that makes the cubes of, of recycling. But everything else will be new. Everything else will be uh, up to not just today's standards, but really the standards that were in place 15 years ago. We are that far behind. Um, so we need and deserve to have a modern facility here in Vermont um, so that we can continue to you know, recycle as much as we can and to have some flexibility for the future as packaging does change. Next, please. And again, more square footage means a higher quality output. This also means much more efficiency. Everything will get run through once. Um, and the folks who are, are um, working there today, they are Casella employees today. If Casella continues to operate the facility, they will all come over to the new facility. There will be no loss of jobs. Um, that has been a question and a concern. Um, well, how will automation affect employment? And actually, it's going to make the work much better. Um, right now, as you saw in that, that previous slide, that sorting room is extremely cramped. Um, it is not a great uh, environment. In the new facility, those sorters will become quality control people. And the machines will sort to the initial pass, and then they will just have to sort anything that is missed by the equipment. So it becomes a much um, less taxing job. The building will be taller, airier, brighter, and will just be a better environment for our workers. Next, please. We are looking to future-proof. Uh, we don't want to be behind again. So with the addition of technology, which can be programmed to read different types of, of material, whether it's different types of fiber, different types of um, 
paper, different types of plastics, we can adjust as packaging changes over the years. If you think, you know, even 10 years ago, um, we have different kinds of packaging now than we did then, certainly than we did 20 years ago, and certainly than we did 30 years ago. So as packaging evolves, we want to be able to also evolve with that. And this new facility will give us the space and the technology to be able to adapt for the future. Next, please. And these are some of the environmental benefits. I won't run through all of them, um, but you know we are building the facility so that we'll be able to accommodate at least up to 70,000 tons of recycling a year. So it gives us a lot of room to expand and to take more material and keep more material out of the landfill, again, as packaging changes um, and as uh, our population is, um, is growing. Um, next, please. And I mentioned the uh, better conditions for employees. We can move on to the next one. And this is an important piece that I want to make sure that all voters are, are aware of and understand. We will not be sending a bill to any of our member towns. We will not be asking to put any fees or any taxes on property taxes. We are going to be paying for the bond out of our operational fees, um, uh, operational revenue and out of the revenue that we receive from the sale of recycling. So we are not going to be, like I said, sending anyone a bill. It will not impact property taxes. Uh, we're not going to be imposing any um, any additional fees, no assessments um, to pay for this this facility. And we've we have modeled um, we have modeled this scenario, uh, multiple scenarios to say, okay, what is the absolute worst case uh, that can happen um, before we are in trouble? <laughs> and it has to be extremely dire, um, meaning, you know, we saw pretty dire circumstances several years ago. It's got to be worse than it was back in 20, uh, 2008, but worse than it was in 2016, 17. Um, it has to be uh, a real catastrophic situation to where we wouldn't be able to pay the bond. Um, so we are anticipating, you know, again, we've, we've modeled uh, at least a dozen to 15 scenarios and are confident that we will not have to come to you for any assessments or any taxes. Next, please. How are we going to pay for this uh, is also the next question. Um, so we are, again, we're looking for um, uh, bonds from the Vermont Bond Bank in the amount of about $16 million. We are um, applying to and have um, uh, the closed loop fund, closed loop partners um, for an interest a uh, free municipal loan in the amount of $6 million. And that is to uh, basically be able to reduce the amount over the course of the 25-year payback of the bond. Um, so it has an initial um, higher price tag in the first five years of paying back that closed-loop fund um, uh, debt. But then in the out years, it's much, much lower. And again, we're kind of relieving some of that pressure in case there are some variations in the markets. We have about three and a half million on hand in cash that we can put towards this if needed. Um, also looking to receive a, a grant from the Recycling Partnership of uh, about $500,000. And this is before applying for any money from the EPA. The um, EPA is managing a, um, a very large recycling infrastructure grant program. It's a five-year grant program, and it is for municipalities. So we will certainly be applying for as much as we can um, to that program. It, the EPA has not seen this amount of money um, available to them ever. So there's a good possibility that we will be um, uh, able to receive some amount of money. It is a, The first round is a competitive grant. We are essentially... Basically, shovel ready. If this is approved by the voters, we are ready to go. So I think we have a very, very good um, potential application to the EPA. So I am hopeful that we will be um, receiving some money from the EPA. But we don't know, and it's never, never, you know, uh, guaranteed. So that's why there's a little asterisk there. But uh, I'm very, very hopeful. Next, please. So what we're asking is for a yes vote. And um, it's a little bit different this year than it may have been in past years um, due to the new law that um, is uh, having the Secretary of State mail out everyone's general election ballot. Um, it is a little bit different. So there may be the assumption that when people receive their general election ballots in the mail that they have everything they need. And this is considered a special election. So the Secretary of State has informed us that they are not able um, to mail our ballot because it is a special election. Even though we consider this to be a local issue, the Secretary of State's office does not. So unfortunately, that means that voters do need to request our ballot 
uh, CSWD ballot, they can do that either through the My Voter page or they can contact the clerk. Um, you can certainly vote in person, and the ballot will be provided to the voters when they vote in person, but it, it's another step. Um, so we're doing a a pretty significant get out the vote and just a voter awareness campaign um, to let people know that when you get your your packet from the Secretary of State, there's still one more one more you need to request, unfortunately. Um, so we're we're doing postcards, we're doing front porch forum posts. We are I'm talking to people. <laughs> um, we're trying to to get the word out that if you want to vote for our our ballot initiative, we do need you to take that extra step. And next, please. I don't know if there's any more on that. Oh, wait just questions at that point. So yes, questions. All right, thanks Sarah. Any questions? Don. So you, they can come to the town clerk and request a ballot You're at, or a call and you're asking the clerk to mail it to them? We are going to be, unfortunately, yes. And our charter does require that the local uh, elections official, election officials in each city and town manage our ballot, our um, election. So we will be reimbursing the, um, the towns for any expenses associated with, with the ballots. And are you concerned that people aren't going to get the message and you won't have a... Yes, absolutely. Absolutely concerned. We need 50% uh, plus one of the, the ballots cast in favor to, for it to pass. So it doesn't have to be, you know, of, of all of the ballots cast in general in the, in the district, just of the ones, just of the ballots cast on our, um, our initiative. But yeah, we want more people... For each town or for... In the entire the entire, the entire county yep the account exactly exactly but yeah we are very concerned <laughs> we were hoping we would be able to have them mailed with everybody else's but that is not the case so it's not approval in, and just to be clear it's not approval in, in a majority of towns it's 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 uh all of the ballots are pooled counted correct okay. that's right okay that's right any other questions tracy um just a comment i went on my voter page just to see what the process is. As soon as you log in, um, you're presented with your options. Um, 2022 general election and same date 11822, and in solid waste district bond vote. Um, so it does seem to be fairly straightforward if you're requesting a ballot on the Secretary of State site. It, that and and I want to thank the clerk um, here in Essex for for making sure that that they did that because that was also another step for the clerks to have to add our special election to your my voter page for the town. So thank you and thank you for checking. I'm glad that it's it's up there. Any other questions, Ethan? Just a clarification on the fifty percent. You said of. of votes casted or ballots. Ballots for our and for so of the. Um, of votes County. slash ballots of just our elections. So let's say um, there's 100 votes cast, ballots cast for governor, but only 62 of those people got our ballot. We just need 51, you know, like of the total of 100 to be able to to pass our ballots. So if, if like the entire district was 100, only 62 people got them, we just need 51 of those people to say yes. Probably not being super clear. That probably made it no, even worse. I just, I just didn't understand the fifty percent or fifty plus one. Like, so there's no minimum number you need, or you need a hundred people to vote. There's no minimum number. So if if only three people cast their ballot and we get two, okay, it goes. Okay. <laughs> but ideally, we would you know we would love to right. have had this in everybody's hands so that they, if they feel strongly for or against, they have the opportunity to let their voice be known. Thank you. It's not how it happened. Kendall, any questions? Do you have a plan for repurposing the existing MER? Well, that's a great question. I love talking about this question. Thank you for asking. Um, that is um, that is still in the blue sky realm. Um, the board has not decided yet what to do, specifically because the, the voters haven't yet cast their, their votes and made their decision. If we are successful in... Um, in being authorized to to borrow this money for a new MRF, then we could start having the conversation about what to do with the current building. And there are a bunch of different options. Um, so it's a good asset. Uh, it's you know a, again a thirty two thousand square foot building in, in the industrial industrial park right off Industrial Avenue. Uh, so I I think it would have some good marketability as a uh, an asset to be sold if the district wanted to sell it. 
I think we could have other uses for it as a district. Um, we could lease some spaces to maybe other kind of like-minded businesses. Uh, we could take on um, additional businesses ourselves or additional, additional lines of, of operations. Uh, we could use it for special ways, special recycling. We could use it for mattresses. Um, we could use it for collecting special items that we don't want in the blue bin, but have recyclability such as plastic film. Um, it could be a great consolidation area for something like that for bulky, rigid plastics, like, you know, little tight houses and turtle sandboxes that won't fit in, uh, you know, in your cart, but are good plastic and could be recycled if they're not able to be reused. So there are several different possibilities as to what that building could be used for. And we'll have probably two and a half years, I think, to figure that out, or at least two years to figure that out. Um, and I would welcome input on, on um, you know, what the district and what the members would like to see that used for. You know, if, if you think that there's something out there that a service that is not being performed or that uh, we need to take a look at, it's a great opportunity. It's a good space. It's just too small for the blue bin, but it can certainly be used for other things. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to suggest for some of the things that everybody recycles now, but that don't actually get recycled, be a good reuse. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kendall. Yes, my question. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Any, yeah, it, it's, it's a good, yeah, yeah. it's a big asset and it, yeah. and it, you know, there's just so much more that we would like to do if we have the space. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Maybe that's what any we do. Other, any other board member questions? If not. I'll open up to the public. Um, Margaret, you want to come up? Um, Sir, if you could make a little space for her. On the other side of her, Margaret. Yeah, actually, actually, Sarah, <laughs> oh, okay. easier for you to move than the mic oh, to move. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. Well, Scott's not here. Come <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on. So um, I just found out yesterday this was even an issue. And when I looked at the information and I may have misread it, it said that you had to request a ballot by August 31st. Oh, okay. And, and it looked like if you went to your town clerk, it had to be by another date and and somewhere i got the idea that you had to go to south burlington to vote for this oh, um there there that's the water district that's champagne water yeah water. water district yes oh, yeah. okay. which is also which confusing. is also a problem pwd yes yeah, <laughs> yeah that one's kind of stealthy huh? different yes. sorry um i think this is great so i guess my my comment for you is to make sure that you get the voter information out. I don't know how you do it at this date because time's getting short. And have you really figured out that this is going to be enough capacity going forward? Are you, are we going to run into this same um, overload position? So, thank you. Great questions. I will definitely address both of those. Actually, there's probably three, but I'll I'll do two. So yes, um, CWD also does have <laughs> um, a ballot initiative. Their, theirs is earlier than ours. So ours is on November 8th. So there's plenty of time um, to certainly request the CSWD ballot, the Chinasola Waste District ballot. As of August 31st, they were available um, to the clerks. Or, that was, or that's what they were designed to be available to the clerks. I think we've, we... Missed it by a week. Um, but they are now at everyone's city and town hall, and they can be requested, again, either through my voter page um, or in person, phone, however your town um, manages that. And yes, there is confusion. Um, so um, we want that's why we want to make sure that we are um, distinguishing ourselves from Champlain Water District. We are doing a series of three um, direct mailers to voters. So one is going out either this week or next week, and then another one in the next two weeks, and another one just the week before the election. So if people do think that the deadline for ours has gone because of CWD, CSWD, they'll get another reminder to say, nope, this is something different, and then a second reminder, another 
something different. Um, we, again, will also be posting regularly in front porch form to remind people that this is something that um, does need attention, that we are, and I'm, I am definitely going to take this back to my team to, to make sure that we are being very distinct um, and making sure that we're, that we're letting people know, no, this is different from Champlain Water District. Um, we're also, we're, we tend to be, you know, mixed up with Casella as well, because sometimes it's Casella Waste Mantras, CWM, and so we will we'll make sure solid waste and recycling is front and center and people know to look for recycling. Um, and then, yeah, so just the awareness. Uh, it's There's a, a, a whole plan in place, but we could always do more. And, you know, again, is being able to speak with you and to talk about it, um, you know, on uh, at your meeting is also really important. And, um, you know, anything that, that if you feel so inclined to even just let people know that this is something that they want to look for, we would certainly appreciate um, appreciate that help, but that's a, it was a, that was a good comment, and I appreciate that, and I will definitely make bring that to my team and just say let's make sure there's not extra confusion. Well, the water votes tomorrow anyway. Well, should help you. That that should help. <laughs> yes, that should help. And yeah. what we want to make sure is that people don't think that it's that ours is also done and they missed it. Um, so hopefully they'll they will see on our postcard um, recycling, and they're like, oh wait a minute that. That is something different. Okay, maybe I need to take a look at this this, this one too. Um, but it is point very well taken. I think the other part of uh, oh capacity. Margaret's question was capacity. Yes, yeah. thank you. So we are the facility is being designed to accommodate um, up to seventy thousand tons of recycling on again on one shift. So we always have the well, I say always. Uh, I can't say always because it is reliant upon staffing, but we could potentially have the ability to operate a second production shift um, if we needed to. If we ever got to the point of needing to process 90,000 tons, which would be amazing, um, we could do it on one and a half or two shifts. I, I don't see us getting there, but if our population really explodes in the next 15 years, um, it's possible. If packaging changes over the next 15 years, it's possible. Um, we are building in extra storage space. Um, we are building in, again, the ability on the lines to add additional technology, whether it's robotics or whether it's additional sorting capacity, so that we have more room to sort even more products. Um, and, you know, I, again, we're designing for 70,000 tons. We're at 47. So we definitely have room to grow over the next 10 to 15 years. And, and because we have space on the property, if we need to continue to bump out, we have a little more room to also bump out on either end. So, or actually in the front. So the location, the lot um, will allow us to, if we need to expand the building, we can expand the building up, out, um, in either side. So, so yes, we are, we're doing it right. We're doing it right. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Any other questions from the public? I don't see any hands online or in the room. So thank you, Sarah. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, your time. Yeah.